Kamari Stevens returning to FAMU and not transferring has solidified the defense and has Coach Simmons talking crazy. Oh yeah, it's Locked on HBCU. Play my music. You are Locked on HBCU, your daily podcast covering HBCU sports. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked on HBCU podcast. Your number one daily one-stop shop for everything HBCU athletics, Monday through Friday, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And I, of course, am Darian Gray, a.k.a. the Mouth of the South, Texas Southern alum and former TSU Herald Sports editor and contributing writer at USA Today's Saints Wire. I appreciate you for making us your first listen of the day every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, the official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. You can visit them today at FanDuel.com slash Locked On to make every moment more. And remember, just because the mic cuts off does not mean that your journey is over. It just means it's time to follow me on Twitter at South Exclusives starts with an S and ends with an S. And today's episode is going to start and end with a little bit of transfer portal talk. We're going to start off with a big return of a player. We're going to end with a player who has decided to depart her team for another SWAC school. And in between, we'll be discussing the big deal that is the Swag Act Challenge, Jackson State versus South Carolina State, and they're being televised on ABC this year. But like I said, we open up with the big news, and that's Kamari Stevens, who he decided, you know what? I've looked in the transfer portal. I don't love my options, as opposed to just sticking here at FAMU with the team that made me who I am. And I'll tell you what, not only does it help the defense, it's got Coach Willie Simmons out here talking spicy. It's got Coach Willie Simmons out here sending shots to Jackson State at the fans. I don't, I don't know. I don't think this person got underneath Coach's skin or anything. He just decided to let it fly today. Let's let's read to you. Let's read to you Coach Willie Simmons' tweet. I had to check and make sure this wasn't some fake account. No, if you're on Twitter, this is not Willie Simmons' visor. This is Coach Willie Simmons. And this is what he said. With so many guys leaving Jackson State, Jackson State via the transfer portal, I'm sure you don't truly grasp the significance of an all-American defensive lineman spurring. FBS and P5 offers to return to your school. He said this in response to a fan. Let me say it again because I thought it was just so eloquent the way he did. I'm going to slow it down. With so many guys leaving Jackson State via the portal, I'm sure you don't truly grasp the significance of an all-American defensive lineman spurning FBS and P5 offers to return to your school. I love it. Me personally, I love it. If you're going to talk that trash, I love it. I'm just going to say this. You got to win. When it comes to week one, when it comes to the third Orange Blossom Classic, you got to win. If you're going to tell a fan that she doesn't truly grasp the significance of a move, you got to win. If you're going to sit there and send shots to Jackson State on a Wednesday evening, you got to win. At the end of the day, that's all that matters. I love talking trash. I love having this rivalry hit, heat up a little bit. I love it. But if you're going to be the one who ignites the fire, then you have to be the one that extinguishes the fire of your opponent. You can't say you can't say a quote like this and not come out and win because Jackson State folks is on your head right now, as they should be. But you know what? You asked for that. You mean it's a rivalry. Ain't nobody shying away from it. Ain't nobody running away from it. Did it feel a little bit unprovoked? Yeah, it did. Do I mind that it was unprovoked? No, I don't. I love it. I love it. But you can't lose. Hit it right where I know you got a. I know you personally. I know you got a lot of people leaving your school. I know you got a lot of people who you thought were going to be big time contributors for you. They entered the transfer portal and you told everybody they were going to come back. They haven't left yet. But Kamari Stevens actually came back to me. Come on, Willie. Come on, Willie. You, you, (laughs) 
<laughs> you ain't have to do it like that. You know what I'm saying? So this is either going to end like Dame versus Paul George where his great defense is all in your face and you just make the miraculous shot. Or it's going to end off like Carlton and Fresh Prince where it looks good. It looks good. And then the camera shows the basket and it ain't good. Now, I don't know. We'll see in September. But I cannot wait because this move has him talking spicy. But who is Kamari Stevens? Who is Kamari Stevens to have Coach Willie Simmons go out on a limb like that and talk the way he was to an opposing fan? It has to be a special talent. And when I see this move to return to FAMU for Kamari Stevens, it, I can't help but think about Isaiah Land. I can't help but think about when Land entered the transfer portal portal in 2022, and he ended up coming back, I can't help but think that now because this is a guy who is going to be a foundational piece for your defense. And for many people, I think he's going to be the leader. I know I discussed this about Isaiah Major, what, two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago? I think it was closer to two. This guy is going to be your leader now. Kamari Stevens is going to be a leader on the team. It's probably be him and Major and a little bit of Gentle Hunt as well. Shout out my guy, Coach G, right? Because I know he likes Hunt. But it's going to be a mix of that. It's going to be a mix of that. This was the number one overall pick in the spring game draft this year. This is a player who is highly valued. This is a player who's who his return was called the biggest signing for FAMU this year by Coach Willie Simmons. I told you, I don't think there's anybody including Kamari Stevens, that is more excited for Stevens returning to FAMU than Willie Simmons. And I guess that's kind of typical to believe that your coach will be excited. But his excitement, it, it's its something that I did not see coming. And when you look at what Stevens was able to do last year, it took him a little bit of a, a time to get into it. But once he got into it, he had 13 tackles for a loss. He had 10 sacks. And all of that was within the last eight games, an extremely disruptive force. You expect him to be that way this year as well, along with Gentle Hunt, along with some other uh, FAMU defensive linemen that we don't know. This is according to Kamari Stevens, that they have players that we might not know right now, but we will know once the season goes on. This is a big thing for FAMU. This is a, this is a you have gotten your star back. Ask Coach Willie Simmons how you should feel. And if you really want to understand how big his absence or really if you want to understand how big his return is, just listen to how these coaches are talking about how big his absence would have been. And I hope that you are not like the user that Coach Simmons was talking to. And I hope that you can truly grasp the significance of an all-American defensive lineman choosing to come back to your school, spurning FBS and P5 offers to return back home. And if you can, I think you can appreciate just how great of a move this is for the Rattlers. Now, going forward, I guess we are going to slightly be discussing Jackson State because JSU versus South Carolina State, the 2023 Swack Miak Challenge will be aired on ABC. And I think it's a big deal. And this is a little bit of an ode to a couple of haters. And we want to do this as we continue with Locked on HBCU. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is the official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. And the NBA Finals start tonight. Miami, Denver, Game 1. The most boring finals ever. Miss me with that. I'm excited for this. And honestly, I think this is the perfect finals to put some money down on FanDuel with. Right? Caleb Martin, Jimmy Butler, Bam out of Bayou. I knew I was going to do it. I tried to fake like Kendrick Perkins, Bam, out of the bayou. But Bam, <laughs> Bam out of bio. <laughs> but then you also have Jokic. You also have Jamal Murray. You also have Aaron Gordon. You have so many players. I can't believe I just messed up Bam's name on here. This is funny. We're going to FanDuel.com because you can't mess up there. Even if you do on your first try, you still have the no sweat first bet. So it's easy to get yourself back going into the groove of things. Because if at first you don't succeed... Pick yourself up and bet again. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to make every moment more. <laughs> As we continue rolling on today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making us your first listen of the day every single day. On tomorrow's episode, we will have our feature Friday discussing Coach Connell Maynard and his Hall of Fame career because he is being inducted into the Hall of Fame now. Before we get into that, I'm still trying to compose myself from saying from saying Bam out of the bayou and then not even doing it right. So it just sounded like I just messed up Bam's name. 
This is what I get from making fun of Kendrick Perkins before I got up here to record. I did that. I brought this upon myself. A little inside information. You know, I like pulling these curtains back and letting you see what's behind here in the backstage. Darian Gray was making fun of Kendrick Perkins, and then he did it. So, boys and girls, this is why you don't make fun of people. Anywho, Jackson State. Jackson State versus South Carolina State will be on ABC this year. And that game is going to be your 2023 Swag Miak Challenge. And yes, it is a rematch of the 2021 Celebration Bowl. That's the reason it's a, a big a big deal. That's the reason it's a big draw. But this this segment right here, these next couple of minutes where we discuss this topic, this is dedicated to a couple of haters. Not individual haters, but groups of haters. The HBCU haters and the Jackson State haters, but mostly the HBCU haters. Because with all due respect, I am not the protector of the J. I am not the protector of the Jackson State brand or of those Tigers. I have a, a group of Tigers that I, I protect, right? Even though that might not be true at the end of today's episode. But that's my guy, Ken Clark, friend of the show. I'm not here to protect the, protect the Jackson State brand, but he will. And Tiger Talk, they like snipers up on the roof because they'll catch you. You didn't even know they were here for you. But still, I want to dedicate this to these two haters because this year's Swag Miak Challenge is going to be on ABC. And under normal circumstances, I may have just let out a tweet. I might have just retweeted that it's going to be on ABC. Not really sure if I wanted to discuss it on the show. That depends. But I felt compelled to do it this year. And I'll tell you why. Because on my Orange Blossom Classic video, a guy said, is it even on TV? It's all about Prime. Now, if you watched that episode, you would know that that guy completely missed the point. And if you didn't watch that episode, the point was about the quality of the game and not how it's going to be televised, televised or any of the spectacle around it. But if you must know, sir, that game will be on ESPN. ESPN won. So, yes, it will be televised. But then again, the way he was talking kind of feel like he might not be here. And if he is, whatever. That being said. That being said, a lot of HBCU haters, because it all comes back to prime. It all comes back to prime leaving. The HBCU haters felt like, okay, Deion Sanders, Hall of Famer, one of the greatest football players to ever live, is gone. Now people aren't going to give two fill-in-the-blanks of whatever expletives you want about HBCU football. And though they're not wrong that some people are going to leave, Yes, yeah, some people are going to leave. I've seen it with, with Wallow and Gilly, right? They left Jackson State when Dion left. Was well, I mad? No, because I expected it. Some people were there to see what Dion's going to do, and those people have transplanted themselves from Jackson, Mississippi to Boulder, Colorado. So, yes, yeah, some people are going to leave. But there was a lot of joy and a little bit too much happiness in the tweets, at least that's what I sensed, with, with Jackson State just going down the drain. They were hopeful for it. It wasn't a prediction of I just think this is going to happen. It was I hope this is going to happen. Once again, I'm not the protector of the brand. But when you start lumping in Jackson State and just saying all oh, HBCUs down the drain now, I have a little bit of an issue. And as the host of Locked on HBCU, we going to speak about you. We going we gonna to confront these narratives. And to the Jackson State haters, this is just very briefly, you thought that JSU wouldn't be a draw? I think this kind of flies in the face of that. JSU is a draw. South Carolina State is a draw. Now, you would be correct to bring up the fact that the, the Swag Miak Challenge does have a TV brand or a TV deal with ESPN. And ESPN and ABC are underneath the same parent company umbrella. You would be correct in those statements. However, last year's game was on ESPN. This year's game is on ABC. The difference between that is a larger range of, of just potential audience. It's a larger amount of people you can get because you don't need cable for this. Everybody can get ABC as long as they can get to a TV. It's not as it's not as hard to access. I look at it like UFC. You know, I, I love me some sports and I get a lot of a lot of like I don't want to say guidelines, but kind of I kind of test it in the parameter by which I test it is a lot of times going by sport to sport and just looking at things that I observe that aren't just an HBCU football, right? So when I see UFC, when they have an ABC event, they try to make it special because they understand that more people are able to watch this event. 
because it's on ABC as opposed to ESPN. Doesn't mean that ESPN has a small range, a small audience. It's just that ABC has an even bigger range of audience. Who knows what the numbers are going to look like? I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you at all. But I do know the potential audience is larger. And that's the important part. Because, yes, you have a deal, but you chose to put it on ABC. I think it could have been on ESPN2 if you wanted. I could be wrong, but I think it could have been on ESPN2. I don't know what the exact language within that that deal is with the Swipe Me Act Challenge. But I think it just needs to be on television, not buried in ESPN+. Plus. This is a win. This is a win to me. That's what that's how I see it. Jackson State versus South Carolina State is a very recent celebration bowl, and people want to know what the rematch is going to look like. I think there's a lot, and I know we focus on JSU, but South Carolina State is a draw too. They were the team that won that game. We cannot, we cannot ignore that. They are a team that, you know what, I have a lot of questions about. I'm very interested. They are probably one of the more intriguing teams in 2023 to me because what is Corey Fields going to be? Coach Pugh is a legend. Coach Pugh is a legend. But I don't know what South Carolina State is going to be this year. That's fascinating to me. That's a draw. That's a team that has a, a pedigree of putting NFL talent or putting collegiate talent into the NFL, developing NFL talent is probably the best way to say that. So, yes, we are referencing Jackson State, and a lot of this has to do with how people view Deion Sanders' departure. But I do not want to miss Focusing in on what Jackson, or excuse me, what South Carolina State brings to the table, because if JSU was playing against the Air or playing against some Rudy Poo team, I don't know if this is on ABC. South Carolina State had to hold up their end of the bargain, and I believe they did, and that was the decision why Disney decided to put this game on ABC in 2023. Going forward, we're going to kind of stick with a Jackson State move because Andriana Avent has decided to leave my Texas Southern Tigers. For the Tigers in Mississippi. But I'll tell you what, I think she made the right call. I ain't going to lie to you. And I'll tell you why as we continue with Locked on HBCU. As we're wrapping up today's episode of Locked on HBCU, thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Every day. Making it all the way to segment three. I truly do appreciate that from you. Thank you so much. Matter of fact, thank you two times for that. Thank you two times, two times, two times, two times, two times. How many times I just said it? I don't know. But Andriana Avent decides to go to Jackson State, and that was the right decision. I do not fault her in the slightest. I do not blame her in the slightest. I support the decision to go to JSU. And it hurts because she was a Texas Southern Tiger. She was. And yet, like, that's why I said, at the end of this, I might not seem like I'm protecting my brand, like I'm protecting this right here behind me. But when people say, oh, he's a homer. Not really. I'm not re- if we had, if I had to talk about Texas Southern a hundred times, I say there's probably a 40 60 split, and 40 percent is me being a homer. I'm not a homer really, and if I am, I'll let you know. I call it how I see it, and how I see it is that Miss Avent did exactly what she needed to do going into her red shirt senior season. Why would you want to be at Texas Southern? With the situation that has been there over the last two seasons. Really the course of a year. I'm kind of lumping in. It's probably not fair to lump in that year ago. But you lose Coach Cooper Dyke. And what happens? She It comes out that it was a toxic environment to work in. Abusive. Like it was just rough. And if you believe everything that was said, that was not a good spot. You transfer in thinking you're going to be coached by one of the best players. Excuse me. By one of the best players to ever do it. And you do, but you don't understand everything that allegedly comes with it. So now if I believe these allegations and all of these things are true between her spots at TSU and USC and all of that. You're not in a comfortable place. You're just not. So that's kind of why I lump in that 2021 to 22 season. But at the same time, you were successful. Now in 22, 23, not so much. Maybe you were more comfortable, but you weren't more successful. Matter of fact, you were significantly less successful. You were one of the worst teams in the SWAC this year, 2-27 and on the year. I think, matter of fact, you might have been the worst team in the SWAC this year. Not a good look for TSU. But here's the thing. You lose afterwards, after this season, you lose the SWAC freshman of the year, Micah Gray. 
you lose her. So, so now you've lost your running mate because you as Avent are the last person to transfer. You already lost your running mate in Micah. She's gone. So what do you do from there? Do you sit here and say, you know what? I am a redshirt senior. I have one year of eligibility left. I'm going to spend it trying to turn around a ship as the person, the top dog. My running mate already left. You could. You could. Or you could go to Jackson State, a team that has had a lot of success. I mean, you're a quality player. You're going to be desired. You stay in within a swag. You know it. You know that you can go in and you can compete to not just be a starter, but to go in and be a star. You understand that you are an all swag player in 2022. Only reason you probably didn't get it in 2023 is because you missed too much time. In 2022, she averaged over 18 points per game. She was the second leading scorer in the SWAC. In 2023, she was the fourth leading scorer in the, in the SWAC at over 16 points per game. She's been a walking bucket since entering the conference two years ago. That's the type of player you want. That is the type of player that you desire, and she's pretty good from three-point. She was really good in her first year with TSU. That 2022, 23 year, that was, she was the first-team all-swag player. And you didn't get an all swipe nomination at all this year, but I think that's because of injury. Just want to clarify. But then in 2023, it's a little bit less. But if you just take where she is on average throughout her career, that's 32%. Because you shot 41% your first year. 32%, you'll be the best high volume, depending on how you define high volume. I'm looking at 100 and up. You'd be the best high volume three-point shooter on Jackson State's team. You'd be the leading scorer by four points per game on Jackson State's team. So, and, you know, if you want to lower that number to 75, 80 three-pointers per season, then you're looking at second. You're still a really good three-point shooter, right? Because they're efficient. They have great efficiency from behind the arc. They put up a decent amount of numbers as far as totals behind the arc. You'll take Jackson State's production at three-point. But Andriana Avent is somebody who's going to only up that production. So, no, I'm not sitting here asking you to try to turn around this program that right now looks lifeless. And the best thing going for you was Avent and Gray. You had the swag freshman of the year, and she says, peace, I'm out of here. You as her running, makes, running mate later, I can't knock you. As much as it hurts to probably have to go through another rough year, I support these women. I support these student athletes. And if you see a situation like that, 2-27, and 27, versus a stable, successful program, something you haven't been a part of, stability and success, I understand why you went with the double S's. I do. I ain't even mad at you, Avent. Do what you had to do. And I appreciate you guys for making us your first listen of the day every single day day on tomorrow's episode we'll be discussing Maynard's hall of fame run because he's being inducted into his high school hall of fame and in the meantime in between time if you're looking for me you can find me on twitter at south exclusives until the next time we hear each other family take care stay blessed peace